Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. This is question number five from the International A Level at Excel, uh, Pure Mathematics 3 P3, June 2021 paper. And this is one of those new topics which was not previously in the old C3 or the C4. It's been added to the new P3. And this is where we have to deal with logarithms and converting. Um, converting equations which are exponential or even um, a, a, um, polynomial into straight line form. Okay, so it's, here we have a graph. It says the growth of duckweed on a pond is being studied. The surface area of the pond covered by duckweed a meter squared at a time t days after the start of the study is modeled by the equation a equals p times q to the power of t. So it's an exponential equation where p and q are positive constants and t is time and a's area. So this is an exponential equation. Figure 1 shows a linear relationship between log to the base 10 of a and t. So it's, it's a graph of log to the base 10 of a and time. The points 0 and 0 0.32 and 8, 0 0.56 lie on the line as shown. Okay, so we got to find to three decimal places the value of p and the value of q. Okay, so I have uh, what we need copied down here so we can just refer to it easily. So basically what we need to do is to think about how to transform this into a form which mentions log to the base 10 of a and t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log to the base 10 of both sides. So log to the base 10 of a. So I'm just going to write log a because that means log to the base 10 a. Okay, I'll just write it here, log to the base 10 of a is the same as writing log a. Okay, you don't have to keep writing 10 everywhere. That's what it means. We know that anyway, that's what it means. When, when you don't write the base, it means to the base 10. Equals, and this is going to be log to the base 10. Again, I'm not going to write it. Um, times p q to the power of t. This t is or to the power of q only, not p. Okay, so it's not outside this bracket. All right, so I've taken log to the base 10 of both sides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the laws of logarithms to split up this into a product of log to the base 10 p plus, because it's a product, we can make it into the sum of the two separate terms to the base, same base of log to the base 10. So log to the base q of to the power of t. And then I can use a further log, uh, law of logarithms where I can write this as log to the base 10 a equals log to the base 10 p plus the power law this is t times log to the base 10 of q all right now i'm going to rewrite this in a slightly different way so we can recognize it in terms of equations or straight lines i'm going to write this as uh, log to the base 10 q times time t times all of this um, okay so it's t times all of this it's not t times just the q so i put it in this bracket plus log to the base 10 of p. Now you're probably thinking, why did you do this? Because it makes it look a bit more complicated. Well, because we can recognize this is a straight line. This is like the, the y, um, and this is like the x. Okay, this is like the x. So we can say y equals, now this is in the form of something times x plus a constant. A constant times t plus a constant. This is like the x this is like the y-axis, this is like the x-axis. So it's like the y is log to the base 10a, and the x is the t. So this is like the gradient, y equals mx plus c. It's in the form y equals mx plus c, where log to the base 10 of q is the gradient, and log to the base 10 of p is like the y-intercept. So using that fact that we've converted into the straight line form, we can find the values of p and q if I can find the gradient and the y-intercept of this line. Now we can see here very clearly that c is equal to 0 0.32. So I can find what p is very easily. I know log to the base 10, I'll write it now just to make it clear what's happening, equals 0 0.32. Now remember, from logarithms, if we have log to the base a, b, that's the same, is equal to C. It's the same as saying A to the power of C equals B. This is like the power. This is like, sorry, this is like the base. This is like the power. This is like the result. So A to the power of C equals B. A to the power of C equals B. So here we can say 10 to the power of 0 0.32 equals P. So P is equal to 10 to the power of 0 0.32. So we can find out what that equals. Okay, so we have 10 to the power of 
0 0.32. That gives you 2.089, 2.089, 2.96. Okay, 2.089296, dot, dot, dot. Now we have to write this to three decimal places. So let's write that to three decimal places. So we can say this is equal to 2.089. That's the value of the constant P. And now we've got to find the value of the constant Q. Now for Q, what we can do here, I'm running out of space, so I'll just use this space here. Uh, for Q, I know that the log to the base 10 of Q is equal to M, which is a gradient. And we can work out what the gradient is. We can say M is equal to the change in Y, which is 0 0.56 minus 0 0.32, divided by the change in X, which is 8 minus 0, which is going to be 8. That will be the gradient of this um, straight line. So we're going to have 0 0.56 minus 0 0.32, divided by 8, which gives us 3 over 100, which is 0 0.03, 0 0.03. So now we can say Q or log to the base 10 of Q is equal to 0 0.03. So similarly, we can use the laws of logarithms to say that Q is equal to, this is the base 10 to the power of 0 0.03. So therefore, we can say Q is equal to, so we're going to do 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 0 0.03, that gives you 1.0715, is that right? 1938, it goes on like this, just make sure. 0715, oh, yep, okay. So three decimal places, that's gonna give me 1.07, three decimal places, zero is two. So that's the value of Q. And that's the value of P. Okay. So that's Q equals and that's P equals. So that's the answer to part A. Okay. What's happened there? That's the answer to part A. Now we've got to go on to part B. Okay. Now for part B, um, it says using or using the model with values, uh, with the values of P and Q found in part A. So this is the model, this is the value of P, this is the value of Q found in part A. Find the rate of increase of the surface area of the pond covered by the duckweed in meters per second per day. Um, in meters, sorry, meters squared per day, exactly six days after the start of the study. So we're going to find the rate of increase of the surface area in meters squared per day, exactly six days after the start of the study, and give the answers to two decimal places. So using P and Q to three decimal places is fine as our final answer has to be given to two decimal places. However, we don't want to find the area after six days. We want to find the rate of increase of the surface area. So we need to find dA, dt. All right, that's what we need to find. Now, if A is equal to, if A is equal to P, which is 2.089 times Q, which is 1.072 to the power of T. Then the ADT, well, this is a form of um, equation, like, for example, if you have Y equals A to the power of X, one of the results we should know is that dy dx is equal to A to the power of X times lin A. So you just multiply whatever you have to the power of something. This is like for exponentials but multiply by lin of that number that's being raised to the, you know, like the base number, you could say. Okay, that's how you differentiate something when you have an exponential expression like this. So if y equals a to the power of x, dy dx is a to the power of x lin a. Okay, so dA dt um, is going to be 2.089 times 1.072 to the power of 2, exactly as it is here, times the lin of whatever this base number was that's being raised to the power of the uh, variable. So this is 1.072. Okay, that will give us the A. That is the differential or the gradient function of this. So this will tell us a rate of change of area with respect for time or with respect, with time, with respect to time for any time t. So we want to find the time t days after the start of the study. t is in terms of days. So t is equal to 6. When t is equal to 6, the ADT is equal to 2.089 times 1.072 to the power of 6. 
times the lin of 1.072 and that should give us our value for the ADT. So we have 2.089 times, okay times, I'll just put it in a bracket, 1.072 to the power of 6, okay, times lin of 1.072. Okay, and that should give us our answer, 0 0.2042, 0 0.2042 continues on. So we want the answer in, or to two decimal places, so it's 0 0.22 meters squared per day. That's what the rate of change of area with respect to time is, and there's the answer to this question. Okay, the derivation of this is going to actually be studied in P4 when we learn what's called implicit differentiation, which you need to know to derive this. Uh, for now, you have to just uh, know it. Okay, I've gone through so gone through it in some P4 uh, questions, I think. So, you know, I've done it. I have gone through it in some videos, but right now for for P3, all you need to know is this result. Okay, um, and that's the answer to the question part B and and that was the end of this question, I think. That's right, that's the last part of this question. Other questions from this particular paper, June 2021 P3 can be found in the link that should appear in this area. Other questions from this topic of uh, exponentials and logarithms for P3 can be found in this area by clicking on the link appearing over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link here and at the bottom of the uh, video in the description you will find links to other papers p12 p4 s1 m1 and also some igcse papers um, that you might want to watch thank you for watching and see you soon